Hey, what's up? This is Justin with Ecclesia, and we are going to be talking about our finances again today in session two of this family meeting that we're having on money. And uh, what we're going to be talking about is attitude. Attitudes towards money, um, how we feel about money, how we've experienced that, um, how our minds have maybe been trained uh, to utilize money or to value money and the things that money can afford us. Um, and then, again, we're going to try and look at what the scripture says about this, what does Jesus say about this, and how can we have our minds renewed by the ministry of the Word and the Spirit so that we can, so that we can be more fruitful uh, with, the, with the gifts that God gives us, including um, the ability to make wealth. So Jesus, in, uh, in one of his famous sermons, the Sermon on the Mount, he says this, he says, Don't worry away with what will we eat and what will we drink and what will we wear. Those are all the kinds of things that the Gentiles fuss about, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Instead, make your top priority God's kingdom and His way of life, and all these things will be given to you as well. So, right off the bat, what do we, what do we drink, what do we wear? You know, those are some basic needs. You know, what, what are we going to have to sustain life? You know, are we going to have clothing? Are we going to have a roof over our heads? Are we going to have food that we need? Um... He says that these are the things that the Gentiles fuss, about, fuss all about. These are, um, Gentiles would be uh, people who didn't know God, uh, people who were separated from uh, the commonwealth of Israel. Um, however, if you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you've actually been grafted into God's Israel, the true Israel. And so having received Jesus Christ as your Lord, seeing as he died for your sins in accordance with the scriptures and that God raised him from the dead, um, we understand this trust that we can now have um, in God to cause us to abound in all things as we bring our lives more and more into alignment with His will and His word uh, by His grace working in us and through us. So we don't want to be fussing about our, our daily needs. Uh, we know that we need them. God knows that we need them and He will provide for them. But he wants us to do something here. He wants us to make our top priority, our number one priority, God's kingdom and his way of life. So God's kingdom, what does that even mean? Um, we talked a little bit about the kingdom of God. We've been talking about the kingdom of God because uh, this is the time of year that where we are looking forward to Pentecost. And, um, and as we explore these things, the kingdom of God, Jesus kind of tells us plainly in, in the Lord's Prayer, he teaches his disciples to pray this, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and here it is, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so our top priority is seeing God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. And his way of life, you know, what does God's way of life look like? Well, we'd really have to dive into the Gospels and look at Jesus' life and see how he lived his life in order to kind of discern what does it look like to walk like Jesus walked. And um, so that being said, what we want to then do is say, okay, this is, this is kind of the, the high calling that we have um, in order to have our attitude towards money and the things that money can afford us. And, um, and so basically what we want to do now is now that we kind of see what the goal is, um, we can say, okay, well, if that's how God wants my heart and my attitude towards, uh, towards the daily needs that I have to be, where am I at now and what do I need to do in order to agree with God and in order to allow him to do that work in my life to, to bring my attitude to more like what he says here in the scriptures? Because let's be honest, it's not... Um, we might think that it is. I thought that my attitude was, was pretty well in alignment with that, but it wasn't. It's not really until I guess I experienced um, some, um, some opportunities that allowed me to depend on God. Um, it was probably um, some, of the more, some of the most amazing miracles that I've experienced in my life have been when I had a need and suddenly God just showed up and that physical need that I had was taken care of. You know, whether it was suddenly food showing up out of nowhere when I had nothing to eat on a given day, 
or maybe it was a situation where um, I was having a difficult time finding um, the hours uh, or the work that I needed in order to be able to, to pay my rent or to pay my bills and suddenly someone just showed up and God said, you know, God had told them, hey, I want you to give Justin X amount of dollars and boom, there it was. And, um, and that was just God working. God revealed from heaven that something was needed for one of his children and it was taken care of. And, um, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't negate our responsibility to, to work with our own hands and to be willing to work with our own hands uh, and in order to make a living wise so that we can have something to share with others as well. And, um, and so, but before Jesus, I have to say that my, um, my attitude towards money was probably, um, you know, I mean, I was very much capitalist. I mean, I was raised that if you want something, you got to work hard, you got to go get it and you, you can't depend on anybody to help you because nobody's going to, nobody's going to look after you. Nobody's going to do it for you. You got to do it yourself. Um, and so I became very averse to, uh, to asking people for help because I just assumed that either it wouldn't be there or they would in some way, um, you know, abuse that position of authority that they had because I went to them for charity. Um, and so, uh, so I was very much raised to avoid that pretty much at all costs. Um, but that's really not really not what Jesus tells us to do. Um, you know, if we, if we are, or if we are needy, if we find ourselves needy and we cry out to God, God is able to meet those needs. And, um, and he's eager to meet those needs because he's love and he wants us to trust him and he wants us to, to depend on him. And we, he wants us to be not only as individuals, but he wants us to be an interdependent community so that, um, so that we can all flourish together. So, as we start to think about um, assets and um, expenses, um, you know, sit down and make a list of all your physical assets. Make a list of, you know, the things that you own. Make a list of um, your financial assets. If you have bank accounts, checking accounts, savings accounts, um, maybe you have some stock investments, maybe you have, um, you know, different financial, you know, assets that are available to you. Uh, those are things that are kind of in your credit. Write those things down and write down, you know, start writing down your debts as well. You know, who do you owe money to? Um, do you have credit card bills that you use on a regular, or credit cards you use on a regular basis, loans? Write all those things down so you kind of have everything in front of you all at once. And, and, then, um, and then as you have already been writing down your, your daily expenses, start thinking about something that maybe maybe one expense that you can that you can either reduce or completely remove from your monthly budget and um, and then take that money and go ahead and set it aside um, and maybe just uh, maybe just see that see what you are led to do with that money by God you know basically go to the Lord in prayer and say you know, okay, here's one expense. Maybe I can smoke one less pack of cigarettes a week, or maybe, you know, maybe I can, um, uh, maybe I can, I don't know. Wow. Wow, welcome back to your regularly scheduled program. That was crazy. But it was a message for somebody. Um, so as you are looking at your, uh, at your assets, as you are looking at your finances and your expenses and kind of taking an account of these things and you're thinking through um, what your income is, where your money is actually going, and hopefully tracking that over the last week has been helpful in kind of discovering, hey, maybe there are some areas in my life where I'm spending money that could be um, allocated as something a little bit more fruitful. Um, and I don't think that God wants you to live like a pauper. I think that God wants you to be uh, fruitful. I think that he wants you to be wise. I think that he wants you to, um, to do things with your money that will, um, that will bring gladness and joy and, um, and it will allow you to be a, uh, a vibrant and fruitful um, 
part of the community where God has planted you. And so, uh, so I would just encourage you uh, to continue um, keeping track of all of your daily income and expenses and, uh, and also start thinking about areas uh, that you might be able to reduce at least one expense. You know, you don't have to go crazy with it, but just pick one thing in your, in your budget or one thing in your expense lines that you, are, um, that you are able to either reduce or completely do away with. And then, again, take those monies and bring it before God and pray for Him to show you how, how should you use those extra monies. And I know some people, they'll actually, um, in the process of saying, uh, okay, I want to do something good, um, but I don't know where I can cut from my budget. And I've actually, I know that there are people who have um, who fasted uh, like one or two days a week, and what they would do is the money that they normally would have spent on on lunches or anything that day, they would take that money and then they would maybe go buy a meal for somebody at a homeless shelter, or they would go and take that money and um, go find someone who they knew that was really struggling, and they would give that money to them as a, as a free gift um, in the name of Jesus. And so there are ways to uh, to reduce your expenses. Um, and find more productive um, ways to utilize those expenses. Now, maybe you're already running in a deficit. Maybe you don't need to find any other place to spend those monies, but just to take care of something that maybe a credit card bill or something. Um, So that's something, again, to bring before God. You know your situation. God knows your situation. And the whole idea is to bring these things to God and let Him inform uh, your decision-making process as you enter into that relationship with Him. And, you know, grab your Bible, open that up, pray. Maybe God will give you something there. Maybe talk to another brother or sister in Christ about kind of why you're doing this and, and to pray through those things. So, um, yeah, and so may it be truly, truly fruitful for you. So, one, continue to keep track of your income and expenses. Two, find one area of your expenses that you can reduce over the next month or so uh, and see how that goes for you, and then we'll kind of take it from there. All right, just one step at a time.